Good morning, dear students. Today we are going to discuss the balance of the last section we discussed today. So I draw only a portion of that to understand it clearly. So here I have the stand only stand with a hanging conductor on it. We already discussed that this hanging conductor experiences a force when it is placed in the external magnetic field due to two things. What was the first one was due to the magnetic field when current passes through the conductor and second one due to the external magnetic field externally also a magnetic field is the due to the presence of a big magnet horseshoe magnet there's a presence of magnetic field see this magnet is north south direction so it's magnetic field that is from north to south it's directed like this and now i have the hanging conductor here we already told that it experiences a force and the motion or we can see the motion due to that force in the forward direction or in the backward direction according to the direction of current here we have a battery connection and we have a rheostat here in order to increase or decrease the current so it is found that when we increase the current passing through the conductor the motion or the force experienced by the conductor also increased so we can write f is directly proportional to I force experienced by the conductor is directly proportional to the amount of current passing through the conductor through this conductor if the amount of current passing through the conductor is increased its magnetic field also increases and hence it experiences more force so that is the first point second point F is directly proportional to length inside the magnetic field length of the conductor inside the magnetic field it does not affect the length of the conductor or length of the conductor outside the magnetic field does not affect the force experienced by the conductor but only one thing length of the conductor inside the magnetic field it affects the force so force is increased or oh, it experiences more force if the length of the conductor inside the magnetic field you have to include that term inside the magnetic field is increased so if it's the proportional to l also and last one if found to be increasing if we increase the magnetic field or magnitude of magnetic field of external magnet here we have an external magnet if we replace this by a little more bigger magnet it experiences more force so force is directly proportional to the magnitude of not the same magnet not the magnitude of the magnetic field due to conductor but external magnetic field if we increase the magnitude of external magnetic field force experienced by the conductor also increases so these three factors we can write in one step that is f proportional to i l b isn't it let me rub this one can i rub so here we write f proportional to i l b so i stand for the current passing through the conductor l stand for length of the conductor inside the magnetic field b stands for magnitude of magnetic field now this proportionality sign can be removed if we introduce a constant i l b so introduce a constant k and later the value of k was found to be 1 so it is easy f is equal to i l b f equal to i l b we obtain how we obtain for removing constant of proportionality constant sorry proportionality sign we introduce a proportionality constant and later the value of k was found to be 1 and hence we can write f equal to 1 into i l b that is i l b itself now we can form an equation for b from here b allow the allow b to stay here take other things to the left side so b becomes equal to f divided by il it is into il here so if we take this term to the other side it becomes divided by f divided by il so it becomes so now we have to define one unit of b what is the unit of magnitude of magnetic field 
tesla isn't it bigger unit sir tesla and one more unit is there. which one goes so we are going to define one tesla how it become one tesla if f equal to one newton and unit of i current is one ampere and unit of length is one meter is as like we done in the last chapter for defining one one unit we have to give one for every units unit of force is newton unit of current is ampere unit of length is meter unit of magnitude of magnetic field is tesla so how can we define one tesla this is a mathematical representation for defining one tesla after writing this you can define one tesla by looking into this equation one tesla is the magnitude of magnetic field if a conductor of 1 meter carries a current of 1 ampere experience a force of 1 newton when it is placed perpendicular to the magnetic field what is that one tesla is the magnitude of magnetic field if a conductor of 1 meter carries a current of 1 ampere experiences a force of 1 newton when the conductor is placed perpendicular to the magnetic field what is perpendicular 90 degree when it is placed parallel there will be no force so f will be equivalent to zero if it is parallel so it's applicable only when they are perpendicular who are perpendicular magnetic field and the conductor see the current flow is in this direction magnetic field in this direction they are perpendicular north to south and current flow downwards so they make a perpendicular and hence it's applicable here so once again one tesla is the magnitude of magnetic field if a conductor of one meter carries a current of one ampere and experiences a force of one newton when placed perpendicular to the magnetic field or magnet you can tell now we have to find the direction isn't it that's the way first of all we'll take a topic that is force acting on a current carrying solenoid or current carrying circular coil or a straight conductor then we will find an equation for for the force experienced or magnitude of magnetic field here we find the equation for magnitude of magnetic field f equal b equal to f by il after that we defined one tesla and now we are going to discuss about the direction of force direction of force so we already got the direction of force here it's in the forward direction so and we told that when we change the direction of this magnetic field the direction of this one also will change and also when we change the direction of current the direction of motion of the conductor may change so let us look how the direction change for that a scientist whose name is professor j a fleming he brought out a new law a new method to find the direction of magnetic field sorry direction of force direction of force Fleming's left hand rule or it's also called motor rule so in order to find the direction of the force experienced by a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field professor j fleming introduced a rule that is called left hand rule or motor rule it's famous rule and this is the basic behind the formation of motor we are using nowadays that is present in fan or the motor pump itself so let us look what is the rule for this you have to stretch your left hand three fingers of your left hand thumb forefinger and middle finger 
this three finger as such they should be mutually perpendicular to each other it should make a 90 degree each other see here it makes a 90 degree and here it makes another 90 degree so it should be perpendicular to each other now to find the direction of force we have thumb finger so thumb finger will show us the direction of force condition is that we have to take direction of current as middle finger and direction of magnetic field as forefinger I will write here thumb for the direction of force then for middle finger I, I will write central okay central finger so you can get it C for C current central finger for current and four finger four finger shows us the magnetic field magnetic field direction of magnetic field so this F and F field by F current by central finger or middle finger then thumb finger will show us the direction of force let's check here so we have to take direction of current in the middle finger so here it's down and direction of magnetic field either this way or this way we have to take here it is from north to south so direction of magnetic field that is here direction of current here direction of magnetic field here you can see the direction of force is just here do you understand so we get the direction of force so in this case what happens the conductor will move forward let us check what happens if you reverse this magnetic field we put south here and north in that portion so what happens now the direction of magnetic field only changed so it's just become like this direction of magnetic field from that end to the end, from here to here direction of current just vertically downward itself no change so what happens see the direction of force it is backward do you understand so if we change the direction of magnet the direction of force or direction of motion of the conductor also changes now one more thing let the magnetic field be here itself no change in the magnetic field let us change the direction of current instead of current going in the vert vertically downward direction let us make in the vertically upward direction so current is taken in the vertically upward direction direction of force from here to here okay current is taken vertically upward c direction of force just opposite to the first one now let's check what happens if we change both the direction of magnetic field and direction of current so current is taken into the upward direction direction of magnetic field from north is made to the into that portion so from north to south again the direction of force is in the forward direction so if we change both the direction of magnetic field and current again this will become in the same direction that is in the forward direction as in the first case but if we change only the direction of magnetic field the uh, sorry the direction of force experienced by the conductor may change not may change it changes and also if we change only the current flowing the direction of current also that makes the change in the direction of force experienced by the conductor so that's all for today we just discussed two matters that is the first one we uh, we derived an equation for magnetic field b after that we defined one tesla then we just directly go through the fleming's left hand rule this rule have one more name which is very important motor rule it may ask you to state the rule at that time just you can write in your own words stretch your left three fingers of left hand such that they are mutually perpendicular to each other then if 
middle finger shows the direction of current and forefinger shows the direction of magnetic field thumb finger will show you the direction of force experienced by the conductor in a magnetic field so that's all about the topics we discussed today thank you for watching have a nice day if you have any doubt in this section you can ask me